everybody, and welcome to Joplin, Missouri, and to this episode of Faith Greater Than Fear. My name is Mike, Mike Schrage. I get to serve here as president of GMPI here in Joplin. And we've been doing these interviews with men and women of faith over the last so seven or eight months. And it's been thrilling to see how God and the Holy Spirit particularly have used these men and women of God to build his name and build his kingdom. And when I say that word, I really take it and that phrase seriously because my good friend Doug Lucas is with me today and he's one that has been used by God to do exactly that. So Doug, welcome. Thank you, it's good to be here, Mike. And I gotta say thank you for the years you served on our board of directors for Team Expansion. I think until they made you CEO at Good News Productions and I've always regretted the fact that they did that because then you felt like that ethics would cause you to have to uh, resign. And we totally understand that. But boy, those were great years. Thanks for all the way you poured into our organization to make us uh, try to help us along the way, at least. So thank you. Uh, and you're very welcome. And I get to serve on a local uh, missions committee here at College Heights Christian Church. And we're a big fan of team expansion. And so tell our audience, what does team expansion do and some of its history and scope, okay? Well, thanks uh, for asking. And uh, by the way, we are grateful for Zayden Nutt before you for the way he encouraged us as we got started around 1978 in just simply trying to provide a way that local churches could team up to send workers to work among unreached people groups. And what we try to do is just multiply disciples, uh, try to multiply groups or simple churches among unreached peoples everywhere. That's essentially what we consider to be our mandate. So we have about 379 full-time workers now in 90 different uh, fields in uh, just over 50 countries. Uh, we have had a couple of really growing works these past couple of years because of, uh, by God's grace, some grants that we've gotten that have allowed us to do more, uh, I guess, uh, larger scale works in certain places that unfortunately, since we're going to be on the web, I won't mention the countries by name, but one country that's been fairly stateless in East Africa, uh, who, they've done piracy and it's a dry place with very little water. And we we're just this morning talking about starting our, see, it would be our eighth team um, in that country. And we have teams in two neighboring countries to work with people who flow back and forth across those borders. Uh, that's been a tremendous growing edge for us. And one of your workers in Nairobi has helped us with that work quite a bit. One of your GMPI, whatever you call them, like uh, remote uh, centers, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done the same kind of thing in another country I should mention in Southeast Asia, now active in 35 different tribes there. And it's all driven by grant money. So we're thankful that uh, those two projects have allowed us to step forward quite a bit. Will we still do the same thing? Mike, you were mentioning about the, the pins on the map on the back where we've uh, got some of the fields highlighted. It's just been a joy to work with some of the same churches that help uh, GMPI around the world, uh, and we're grateful to them as well. So getting close to that 400 number of workers, and one of the other cool things, isn't it, Doug, is that it's not just thinking of cross-cultural workers that are looking like us, but they're people of color, they're people from other countries. God's mobilizing a global army to do that, and therefore some of the growth you're having. Tell our audience a little bit, when you say the word unreached people group, tell our audience what that means, because you're in a very specific niche. And I bet by now most of the audience has, have heard that, but I will, because you asked. Uh, back in the late 70s, uh, this term started to be used to describe uh, tribes, castes, kindreds that were not able to respond to Christ just because a neighboring tribe had. And what we're talking about is a, a tribe that for purposes of language or maybe acceptance uh, culturally or socially, uh, the church kind of reaches a barrier, a wall, and in order to reach that uh, neighboring tribe, we kind of have to design a specific or a, a contextualized strategy that focuses on them uh, specifically. Uh, unreached people groups sometimes are described as having maybe less than 5% uh, notionally or nominally uh, Christian adherence, sometimes described as having less than 2% evangelical believers of all kinds. And then now in the last few years, 
We've also focused a lot on unengaged group. And an unengaged group would be one step even farther unreached. By unengaged, we mean there's no viable church planning strategy, no boots on the ground implementer that's learning the language of that group and living there long term. So uh, those kinds of groups are tough. We also have been focusing a lot on people that don't have the Bible yet. We've been partnering with our good friends at Pioneer Bible Translators. We have, I think, now five different works that are side by side with them in which our workers serve on the same team as they are serving, they as the translators and then our workers as the disciple makers. And when people visit, I'm sure they don't even know which org and which worker is which because working together so closely. And part of that's due to the retreat that we try to do each, each spring with you and the leader of Pioneer Bible Translators and five other workers. And that retreat for eight CEOs of our like-minded organizations, that's really helped to promote these kinds of uh, cooperation. Totally agree. And uh, it's all about synergy in that regard right. and building the kingdom and finishing the task. Doug, we're in an unprecedented time. We're getting tired of hearing those two words, but, but we're not tired of what God is doing and using and redeeming it. So tell us with your 30,000 foot view of all those hundreds of workers and all the ways that you have not right now been able to travel probably, but before February of this year, tell us what God is doing in redeeming the pandemic. What are you seeing with movements in these very much uh, hard to reach areas that you just described a bit for us? It's funny because uh, two years or so before the pandemic, uh, we were partnering together with organizations like yours to launch uh, an online uh, in life uh, mentoring uh, strategy that would provide people with a kind of course that throughout 10 different sessions would mentor us on how to become a disciple worth multiplying and how to try to share our faith and multiply groups both around the block and around the world. That course was called Zume, Z-U-M-E, the happens to come from the Greek word for yeast. So the idea is a little bit of yeast can go a long way. And sure enough, that course has, I was just on a meeting earlier today with some of the leaders of that course, and I'm astounded at the number of people around the world that are now active in this course. We're talking tens of thousands of people that have signed up and started experiencing sessions, places in some of the most unlikely places we can imagine. Uh, for instance, in uh, Pakistan this morning, we were just talking about tens of thousands of new courses and we can see whether or not they're watching and participating in the sessions. It's not just that they're kind of trying to, to sign up for them to get something. There is nothing to get. It's a free course, but there's no cash prize at the end. And yet tens of thousands of people around the world are signing up for this course. And what we found is that it works really well to do the course over Zoom uh, forums like this, online forums. Thank goodness that uh, groups like Good News Productions, uh, who used to specialize in slide carousels and film strips and videos that we would pass to one another on uh, video cassettes or, or uh, DVDs, thank goodness that Good News Productions saw far enough into the future to make the jump to disseminating, distributing tools like this online. You were involved at the forefront of helping make Zume happen. And one of your workers has helped us translate Zume into several other languages through the, the technical uh, know-how that he's passed along to our uh, tribal members that have been helping Zume go into their particular language. So that's been one really exciting way that, uh, I hate to say it, but COVID has forced us to understand how that we can actually reduce the cost of distributing tools like this to an online approach that really does away with geography. It does away with the old fashioned handing somebody a DVD and makes a kind of a flat earth so that we can now destroy the walls of geography and share with share Christ with people all over the world. So we've definitely been seeing that happen. I was just going through some numbers today at some of the places that in the middle of uh, this whole pandemic, when you think that everything would be locked down we've actually been able to start new things. And part of that has been because of the growth 
of online courses like uh, Zoomy and uh, that's like manner. So I've just been looking here. It's enabled us to launch 740 new groups or simple churches so far this year brings to a total of 3,985 active groups. And we have 25,812 people participating in those. And that's a real time number that's uh, actually real time, like as of this very moment, as we're making this recording. So people are still participating. It's just that they're having to shove sometimes to the online world instead of in person. Well, I tell people the, the numbers, I hope our audience is hearing what you're telling them, uh, Doug, and the fact that the pulpit and the kind of church-centric, sermon-centric elements may be stopped and blocked right now, but the preaching of God's words and making disciples has never been stopped. The church has never been closed. She just has to go a different way. And so what you're describing with technology and the old, old message of a disciple making a disciple is really uh, something that is just for uh, such a time as this. It's impossible so. to put into words. I think about a, a friend that is a mutual friend for both of us. Uh, he's an outreach director of a mega church on the West Coast, and he uh, is trying to put the Zume course into work in his own church with new Christians who decide they want to accept Christ. And I know he had a course that recently had seven people signed up for, and uh, we just said to him, boy, we're, we're seeing a trickle come in from a lot of different places around the world since you're doing that on Zoom anyway, does it matter to you if we invite some other people? W would you be willing to have some others come in? Hey, welcome back to our interview with uh, Doug Lucas. And uh, the internet is wonderful. Technology is great. But when it breaks, it really breaks. And that's just what happened in the middle of this interview with our friend Doug Lucas. As we heard about what he does in leading team expansion, what we've heard is what God is doing in reaching unreached people groups that team expansion has a passion for in utilizing an online tool called Zume, Z-U-M-E, to create these very simple church study groups around the world. And what we were just getting ready to talk about was, is that some of the lessons he's learning, and by the way, we're going to plug a book that he's talked about in his research, talking about different uh, operations that are happening around the world and movements in terms of making disciples that make disciples. And we'll highlight that later in the program. But it is exactly this, my friends, that what has happened overseas is what can also happen here and is happening. And Doug is a part of that along with other colleagues. And so there's churches in the Midwest and in, on the West Coast, like he was talking about, that are using this online program, using technology, like the internet and social media, and are beginning to have online courses that are being able to engage seekers in conversations about scripture, discussing it, and then asking and calling toward obedience and then coming back and reporting the next week through a cohort mentality. And so it has been a beautiful thing. And so God has really been redeeming. I really hope you hear this word, redeeming what the pandemic has been doing to us as a church here in the US and around the world. And where we feel that there's doors that are closed, the internet, when it works, is a beautiful way to allow anybody to reach anybody anywhere in the world. And so our friend Doug Lucas sends his uh, regards of apologies. Again, they were going to be out of internet for hours. And so we said, well, we'll finish this up. We'll highlight your book. We'll highlight again Team Expansion and going to their website to study more about what he has been able to found and what he directs right now. And so from Doug Lucas there at Team Expansion Headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky, ourselves here at GMPI, we want to ask you to have a blessed day. If this was a helpful program for you, we hope that you'll share it in your social media circles. There's also a podcast version as well. And so from all of us here uh, in the kingdom here at also GMPI, we want to wish you a great day and that indeed your faith will always be greater than your fear. God bless you.